Collective Awakening podcast, sharing truth and knowledge in this time of conscious awakening with Chris and Stephen. Welcome, friends, to the Collective Awakening podcast. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome back Mark Sargent. We'll be talking all things flat earth once again, number two for this one. So we'll be coming back. Uh, we had a great chat with Mark last time, um, covered a wide range of subjects, but I feel this is a subject we could talk, you could talk for hours and hours on. And I know a lot of our listeners, we got some feedback, which I was discussing with Mark. Um, for, Plenty of you that enjoyed it out there, but a lot of people asking, you know, why don't you ask this? Why don't you ask that? Uh, and we're here just to to ask Mark our questions here and have an open-minded discussion. That That's the, the key for us, um, to allow a platform to discuss these things. Because I think, not just talking about Flat Earth, um, when we talk about Flat Earth, if we're able to, or we're going to accept that that's a fact for those who believe, um, then what um, what knock-on effect does that have in for everything else? What does that mean for our history, who we are? Uh, and I find that very, very intriguing. So, Mark, thank you so much for being with us once again. Oh, yeah, no, thank you. And as far as open-minded discussions, no. No, no, no. Death to all who oppose Flat Earth. Let's just get that right out, <laughs> right out of the gate. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? And, and what amazes me about this subject is, uh, you know, we're used to discussing things that can trigger people, but yeah. wow, this was a trigger button. <laughs> and, and it has been ever, ever since we started doing this back in uh, 2015 um, to where if you can think of a major channel on YouTube, they all talk to each other and, you know, everyone looks, it's like, okay, what happens? And the word got out some years ago, which was, if you do a flat earth video, not only will you get a big bump in hits, but the comment section will just lose it depending on, you know, what sort of demographic you're hitting. And uh, yeah, I mean, cause again, the, the questions, I'm sure you've got a bunch, you know, I, I get them all the time, which is you introduce flat earth to a topic. And if they can get past the, you're an idiot, you know, routine, they go into, how does this work and what about this and and it's just it's never ending until finally they're like oh, okay well, I, I, i've asked all, everything i want to ask and then they're either with us or not with us so yeah and i think that's 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 fair enough isn't it yeah so um yeah i'm sure i'm sure it'll roll that way again um so let's uh let's let's go for it do it um, so so we covered a lot on flat earth last time really if anybody's watching and they didn't watch our uh, previous episodes you'd be able to find it um but do you know it's interesting i haven't done um a great deal i don't like to research things too much from what what i know uh, because that's why i'm talking to you mark as well <laughs> but i wanted to ask about uh, a gentleman called neil tyson yeah, and he's come up a few times when I have looked on this subject. He seems right. to come up in the in the top uh, YouTube searches and such as being uh, quite opposed to flat Earth, and actually just calls it ludicrous. Uh, he should be. He's an astrophysicist, and he runs a planetarium and television shows which deal exclusively with space. But go on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and there's a couple of things I want to uh, touch on with this. Is yeah. First of all, you've hit on it already, uh, why it is so high on his priorities, and it really seems to trigger him quite a lot. You can feel it. Yeah. Uh, but he talks about the lunar eclipses as well mm. and how when we have the lunar eclipses, we're not seeing the – that if the Earth was flat, it wouldn't cover the entire moon. There would just be like – Oh, and you see, I – all right, let's preface this. First, first off, there are only three media, what I call media scientists in the world, meaning scientists you will see on camera on a regular basis. First and foremost, number one with a bullet is Neil deGrasse Tyson from the United States. Second is Brian Cox from your neck of yeah. the woods. Yeah. He, he absolutely just denies us straight up. He actually made a statement. He says, no one's ever believed in flat earth. It's like, like, no, like, like it was never, ever a thing. It's like, what are you talking about? You could type in ancient cosmology into Google and hit images and every culture believed in it at one point. Um, and then there's um, Michio Kaku from Japan 
who is interesting because I don't know if he's because his, his English is absolutely perfect. I don't know if he actually speaks Japanese. I should probably look that up. But between that's the only three people they ever put uh, on um, on television when it when it comes to this. However, to your question, as far as the eclipse goes, the lunar eclipse, you have to compare it really to the solar eclipse. So your listeners will kind of get some context here, which is so the 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 solar eclipse, when you hear, oh, there's going to be eclipse, right? And, you, you know, the if you're in the lucky enough to be in the path, most people don't understand the, the blackout zone where there's only, you know, where you, where the sun is completely covered is only 70 miles wide. That's not very wide at all. Right, it'll it'll go a long, long ways, but the the path itself is only seventy miles wide. And I had the privilege when I was doing the the Netflix documentary to actually be in that path down in uh, down in Oregon, and on the west coast of the United States. And where am I going with this? It makes more sense for in our model because we say the sun and the moon are less than fifty miles wide, roughly, right? Because uh, shadows can't get smaller, they can only get actual size or bigger. You know, shadows don't go go might. You don't. You never walk by a wall and your shadow turns into an action figure. It's never ever going to happen, <laughs> yeah. right? So if the moon is two thousand miles wide, the moon. If if that's what you know, if you believe mainstream science says, then why is the blackout zone only seventy miles wide, right? And the same thing applies to a lunar eclipse. So if the Earth is 8,000 miles wide, then you know, do the math. It's the, the blackout zone on the moon should be 250 miles wide. So the moon should really kind of turn into an eyeball. So why would it be covering the entire moon at all? Meaning whatever's happening with the lunar eclipse is wrong. I don't know if it's a design issue or if it was done that way on purpose, but... If again you follow the, the the solar eclipse model and extrapolate over to the moon, the moon should turn, turn, turn into an eyeball with a big black pupil in the center. It never does, right? Yeah, he says, "Oh, look, it's, it's this curved thing." Now, one other thing I, I should mention is, can you do lunar eclipses in a planetarium? Yeah, you can all day long. How do you do it? Well, you don't put anything in front of a light source. There is no sun in a planetarium. You just shade the moon. And that's what we do when we're, we're building simulations, doing anything with software. That's we, we don't make physical objects or even, you know, 2D objects that, that can generate light like that. We just shade the other object. In fact, I had a friend call me up. Real, I, I know we're limited on time, but I want to mention this, which is um, after that eclipse, he calls me up and he goes, he goes, Mark, he goes, I've, I've photoshopped the hell out of this eclipse. He goes, there's nothing eclipsing the sun. And I go, what do you mean there's nothing eclipsing the sun? Because there's no three-dimensional object that's eclipsing the sun. The sun is just shading itself. I'm like, are you serious? Uh, anyway. So wow. there you go. Ho hopefully, hopefully that sort of answers it. I, yeah, thanks I, for I that. I tend to go off the road a little bit. Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. Please do. Okay. <laughs> Feel welcome to. Right. Um, but also the other thing you mentioned, now we did touch on this in yeah. what we'll call part one, is that he's saying, right, if we're... Uh, the Earth is flat. Why are all the other planets round? <laughs> all right. <laughs> First off, I can tell that you are officially not a believer because you use the word round. We don't even <laughs> yeah. use, we don't even use the word round because remember, round can be a dinner plate, it could be a hubcap, it could yeah. be a dining room table. We use sphere, ball, and globe. But I know a lot of people like to use round, which is fine. So why are all the other planets uh, are, are are why are they all balls and ours aren't? Right. Well, it's like, okay, who said there were planets to begin with? That, that's the, the opening question is like <laughs> when you go into a planet, it's, it's like it doesn't make sense unless there is no solar system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Meaning yeah. it's not it's not that this place is is fake. It's all fake. So when you go into a planetarium, again, you can, I, I don't know where the nearest one to you is, and I don't know when the last time. For planetarium, for those of you who have never been to one, is basically a small stadium where the seats go completely horizontal, and you can look up on the ceiling, and you can see, and they, they project stars and crap on, on the ceiling. Um, yeah. and, and on weekend, it's usually for school kids during the weekdays and on weekends, they do stuff like laser Floyd and laser Led Zeppelin and crap like that. And, and people just get lit up and go, wow, man, it's really great. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's what they, they over here. That's what they did for years. It's like, we can't get anyone to go to the planetarium on weekends. It's like, I have an idea. Let's play rock music for, for a couple hours and then just, you know, disregard the drug policy. It's like okay so 
Um, where is I going with this? Uh, oh yeah. So if you're in a planetarium and you're looking up on the ceiling and you see, like you see Jupiter, right? Jupiter's up on the ceiling and it looks pretty spherical, right? And you say, Hey, wow, that doesn't look spherical. Uh, can you land on it? No. Why not? Because it's just an image on a ceiling, right? Who's to say when you don't, when you walk out of that building, that you're not just in a much, much bigger building. We're basically in a giant planetarium that was engineered orders of magnitude higher than what we could do. We had nothing to do with the building of this place. But why wouldn't you be fooled by it? I mean, come on, you could take an Amish person, blindfold them, put them into a planetarium that we have now, right? Take the blindfold off and be like, oh my God. It'd freak him out, right? And this is, we're not talking about cavemen. We're not talking about grabbing somebody from the past. We're talking about an Amish person that's probably never watched television in his life. It would freak him out. I remember, heck, I'm a tech guy. And I remember, I'm old enough to remember when the first HD TVs came out. I was in this, you know, the, 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 um, the video stores just staring. I'm going, my God, it's, it is the future. This is where, this is, this is where we've come. I mean, the, the realism to where, sorry, uh, off on a completely tangent, people don't remember this for decades and decades and decades, the news was broadcast in a certain way. But when HD television came out, they had to hire completely advanced makeup people for the newscasters. Because it's like the makeup now has to be perfect because otherwise, you know, HD shows every single flaw, every single freckle. And mm -hmm. that's, that's just HD technology. Imagine what you could do if you had another thousand years, what you could, what you could build. Sorry. Rope me in if I go off too far. What do you got? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, um, I, I feel like you've answered everything there that I put forward and, I will add this on our last conversation. We were talking, we covered a lot, yeah. uh, really interesting to me. Um, and that evening, I think we were in the winter still, the winter months. Mm -hmm. And normally it goes dark here around the time of year we're in, about 5 p.m. Right. And I literally feel like I, I went in the house and at 4 p.m. it went completely dark. And I thought back to what we'd spoke about straight away. Like, it's like somebody's flicked a switch. They yeah. turned the lights out. That's how I felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I felt that was amazing that that happened just after we had the conversation about flat Earth. So synchronicity. I, I do not believe in coincidences. I believe in everything. I believe in everything for a, for a reason. And uh, yeah, uh, wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. Weird little things. I believe in signs and wonders, and I look for them all the time. Yeah, and, and something I wanted to touch on that was quite current, really, is about the weather. Now, mm. I'm sure anybody listening from any parts of the world, we can speak for the UK. We are experiencing some strange weather. And I know in the US, there's been oh, yeah. a lot of unusual weather occurring. So right. uh, um, what are your thoughts on that and how the weather is engineered? I, I think we're all coming to that process of it is engineered. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, we've gotten, as our tech, I mean, come on, we've been able to seed clouds 100 years ago. You know, that, that was something that wasn't new. Farmers are like, hey, can you throw some chemicals into the clouds so that we can uh, get some rain here? You know, pay, a, you know, jump in your biplane and, uh, and, and go do that. And people do that, you know, 100 years ago. But People have been asking me since I've, I've gotten into this. Well, it was really it's strange because I, I I never brought it up, but some people just kept, it's like, do, do flat earthers believe in climate change? I can only really speak for myself, which is, um, do, first off, do I believe that, that things are changing? I mean, come on. <clears throat> the fact that you had to change the term from global warming to climate change in the media so that nobody says global warming anymore. And that was done over a period of about a year. And I watched it happen to where it's, it's like, oh, no, global warming. Is, uh, no, now it's just climate change. It's changed. It's not always a heat wave. And I was like, yeah, I suppose. But most of the records that are broken have to do with heat. But all right, that's fine. You don't want to scare people with the whole sci-fi thing because there's been movies you know, touching on, you know, what would happen if the heat kept kept rising. But climate change makes much more sense in an enclosed system. If if you're in, you're in a big snow globe, right, it makes more sense. Uh, meaning, um, doesn't the term greenhouse gases make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? Meaning, it never made sense to me that, you know, that your, that your warmer or lighter gases would go higher and higher and higher, and they'd get to space you know, to the edge of space and just stop 
and what create a dome like going against the law of thermal dynamics that says that vacuum versus no vacuum everything just be shredded off into space you're just going to ignore that uh and but but it did push the the agenda for a while so do i believe this is climate change yeah the the analogy i give is like if you're in a car with the air conditioning on right you're sitting there with people in a car everything's fine somebody walks into the car in the back seat carrying a little propane lantern right even though it's a little propane lantern it's going to affect how that air conditioner works right it's going to create some different hot spots low spots the whole dynamics of that car is going to change now another person comes in with a propane lantern and another person comes in i know it's a big car right and you know get in the back and into the boot the boot Right, I, I'm trying to get the English term right. It's it's lid yeah, and boot. Right. Yeah, yeah. Watch enough British films, you pick up a few things. <laughs> so, so, thanks, thanks, Guy Ritchie. So, um, uh, but eventually, what happens is the system has to adjust for that. And I, you know, if we're living in a in a giant automated system, and you have come on, uh, the internal combustion engine is really just tiny furnaces. I mean, you could use a car engine, you could modify that. I'm sure people have done it on YouTube, and you could heat your house with it easily. I mean, they generate huge amounts of heat because you're burning fuel, gasoline. Well, if you have like, I don't know, let's say low numbers, let's say 800 million of those things running constantly at any given point in the world over a period of decades, what do you think that's going to do? The system has to compensate for that, especially if it's enclosed. So yeah, I do believe in climate change. I do believe we're, we're tied to it. Do I believe it's tied to fossil fuels? Durr. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we're burning fossil fuels all, all the time. Um, and as far as, I'm sorry, back to your thing about, you know, can, do we, do we engineer the weather? Does the military or certain governments, we'll just call them governments, do they modify the weather on a regular basis to benefit themselves and or weaponize it against other countries? Yeah. Wouldn't you? You know, if your crops are having problems, it's like, okay, we got to create an offshore thing to dump a whole bunch of rain. It's not going to be accurate. doesn't matter. Just give them a whole bunch of rain. It's going to be some flash flooding. doesn't matter. Just get it in there, right? And then you have somebody from the military saying, so what would happen if we gave this particular area over here a really bad heat wave for like, I don't know, two months? Can you make that happen? It's like, yeah, but in doing so, you're going to affect other things, right? Everything has consequences. Everything has costs. So... If the energy transfer system is this big integrated thing, you try to focus on one thing, even it's, it, whether it's a benefit or a negative thing, you're going to affect the rest. And you multiply that by how many countries can do that now. Uh, let's say minimum China, Russia, uh, UK, for a lesser, lesser example. And uh, I don't know how, how that works on an island, but it doesn't really matter. And the United States. Between just those four company, or companies, <laughs> a little Freudian slip there. Between those four countries, you could do a lot of, lot of damage or create a lot of inconsistencies. So yeah, climate change, absolutely real. And weather engineering, sure. And weather weaponizing engineering, sure. Even more. Why? Again, the, the best part about this, sorry, I'll, I'll end this point on this, which is the, the, one of the, the greatest things, you know, military tries to come up with stuff to where you can never be blamed, right? So if you create a, a major heat wave or a massive electrical storm or a cyclone or a typhoon or whatever it is, eh, it's just an act of God. Even though, you know, even though your intelligent network says totally sure the Americans are doing this, it's like you're never going to be able to prove it. And if you tried to release that in the media, you, you'd come off as semi-crazy. You might as well say flat earth at that point. So, anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Stephen because I feel like I've asked a, I've, I had a, a round of questions there. That even, I had to get even you chatterbox. I was I was wondering when you <laughs> shut up. What's up? Yeah, yeah. I just want to go back on the point with uh, the lunar eclipse, and yeah. a lot of people will argue, and I, and and it's something that actually I I believe that we never landed on the moon and i felt that was a, a how dare you sir how dare you say <laughs> that the americans which by the way the americans the ultimate uk spinoff the uh, the americans never <laughs> never went to the moon how dare you how dare you say that uh, but go ahead yeah, there's more 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 people believe that more more than ever because it you know truth is truth so how would it how would it work in terms of the flat earth side then so is it a projection the moon or is, is it also another i don't know 
I don't. I could go either way. I mean, there's been a lot of speculation about the moon over the last five years, which is one is at the very least, it's a 2D object, right? At the very least, it, it, it mm. very least, it's what we could do, which is, you know, a 2D object on, on a ceiling. That's minimum. However, is it a 3D object you can land on? I doubt it. I really, really doubt it. Is it is a three day object that uh, that's mechanical in nature? I don't know. There's been too many people that have said too many videos out there that said that sometimes it it has a transparency issue, meaning there are, you know sometimes you can actually see a few stars through it. That would screw things up. Plus, if it's only fifty miles wide or or less, uh, it it would also mess mess things up. And also, sorry, let me throw one more thing in there because people say, well, you know, it's got to be real because the moon affects the tides. I go, does it now? <laughs> because we would never, ever design that. Even our simulations, we wouldn't design design that. You know, when we build um, simulations for whatever it is, entertainment or the military, we um, we build in physics engines. And yeah, we build in physics engines like, you know, artificial gravity and crap like that. You never uh, attach, you would never attach a heavy gravitational force to such an object that small. Ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever. So the, the moon, again, the everything up in the sky is just this giant, heavily ornamented clock system that predates language. That's all it really is. I mean, yeah, you can you can tie the moon to the tides and say, oh, when the moon's here, the tides do that. It's like, yeah, it's just because that's where the moon is when the tides happen. How you're you're making the associations? Oh no, that's that's what happens. You're you're making that jump. To, so no, no, the, the moon causes the tides. It's like, well, unless it doesn't. <laughs> you want to you want to go down there? Oh, that's fine. I mean, again. You can you can make the connection to where I know why they made the connection and I know why people bought it, but you don't have to go there. You can just say, but hey, why do you feel sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was, I was gonna say, why do you think there is there's more and <laughs> more people that are questioning, which is absolutely amazing? People are uh, being triggered, they're questioning things, which is absolutely amazing. But why do you feel yeah. more and more people are moving towards the flat earth? Because by revealing this truth, what do you feel the outcome should be of this revelation, of this investigation, this research? Got it, got it. Would you, what would you like to see? I mean, would you like to go to Antarctica? And get well, do it, do it. All right, first of all, you're asking too many questions. All right, so <laughs> let, let, me do, let me do your first two, which is, okay, first, first one was why were more, are more people, more and more people getting into it? Um, the, the big reason is because most people, uh, will always choose the lazy option and that's not me being mean, right? Um, it, it's been something that's been talked about f by philosophers for years, which is what is the, mm. the most common, um, human condition? Is it laziness or fear? <laughs> and it's like, wow, that's a tough one. Um, I'm going to go with laziness because <laughs> it's just our, na it's, it's mammals. It's a, it's a natural state. So when we, when I've said this for years, which is, if you create a model of the universe, which is easier to understand than the current solar system model, and people get it, and it resonates with people more and more, people are going to go with that. And, he, and I've had scientists come back and say, well, just because it's easy doesn't mean, mean it's right. And I go, no, but it means that people will naturally lean in that direction because it's easier. You know, when, when you're talking about the solar system model, you're talking about what trigonometry and calculus and, and um, uh, quantum mechanics and string theory and all this uh, math that is far, far beyond them and, and concepts that they can't even wrap their heads around, even if you post the numbers in front of them. And again, use the, the light year, the fact that we have to measure the speed of light in seconds, because if you try to even do it by a minute, it they can't get their head around, it, right? So that's why people really, it resonates with, because it's an easy thing to understand. It's like, so it's not a solar system. And you've seen the model I think I've held up in front of you guys before. You know, you're living in a snow globe. You're living in a building. The end. Roll credits. Good night, everybody. That's it. I that That's all you can do. And people will will gravitate towards the, uh, and no play on words there, uh, towards the, uh, the easier option. Same, no different than why people, even though it was logistically harder, um, why people move from phone calls to texts, right? We, we were talking on the phone for 80 years and then all of a sudden it's like, no, you can text. Yeah, but you lose complete in translation. You have to create an entire emoticon library just to compensate for the what gets lost in translation. And it's like, yeah, but emotionally it's easier. 
You don't have to pick up the phone. It's like, okay, I got to get ready for this phone call. You don't have to give it yeah. nervous. People, people, relationships are born and die in text now. And it's like, yes. I, I, I deliberately, I've never sent a text in my life deliberately because of that. I'm Gen X. So I'm, I'm never going to do it. I saw what was happening. And it was like, no, no, no. So the second part was, where do I think it's going? Right. You know, it's like, where, where would, where, where, what's the end game here? For this yeah, and yeah. i do believe there is something you guys can look this up when you get a chance called the hundredth you guys ever heard of the hundredth monkey effect did i talk about that last week no or last time i was here okay hundredth monkey effect <sighs> science loves by the way backpedaling from things they discover if it doesn't match their paradigm it's like so the hundred monkey effect was they were uh, uh analyzing some monkeys over in you know the beach monkeys over in japan you know, oh, the, I remember you. I remember you saying, you yes. remember some of this, right? Right. right. Yes, so they washed yes. the So they, they, some of the monkeys were washing the potatoes in the sand just so they didn't have to eat sand, right? You know, and, and, and all of a sudden, when they hit about the hundredth monkey, I don't care if science disputes this or not, you guys are the one that came up with it. We didn't, where all of a sudden, all the monkeys learned it at that point. It went from 100 monkeys to all the monkeys simultaneously, including monkeys in other islands the scientists were not even at. So they go to the other islands that were, you know, the, the other, there was no connection. There was too much water. They just throw the potatoes down. Monkey's like, yep, we're going to wash this. And it's like, and, and I totally got that coming from a software background, which it was, it was an update. It was, it was a, a productive update, which was it benefited the monkeys to wash the potatoes in the sand. So somebody up there made the decision. It's like, yeah, yeah we're going we're gonna to update the monkeys. So, and then all of a sudden, all monkeys in that, in that whatever species immediately learned that. So do I think that could happen with us? Yeah, I, I do. We've seen this with different things. Once you yeah. get the, the, a common theme into the consciousness of people, which is, oh yeah, by the way, the world is a lot more simple than you think it is. That starts resonating more and more. Plus you've got something called the, uh, and I, I really should look this up. It's either the seventh man effect or the eighth man effect. And you guys have run into it yourself. Everybody's run into it at one point. Where if you hear a concept or, or even a simple idea from seven different random sources, doesn't even have to be in a day. It can be in a week, right? A movie reference, great one. Which would be if you have seven different people mentioned to you unsolicited in passing or you just hear it's like oh yeah just see that movie blah 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 you know i i liked it it was pretty good eventually your mind there's something in your mind that triggers it's like yeah you know what i should probably just watch this it's part of the whole herd mentality you know yeah. the, the, the if a million people jump off a bridge uh, that that whole thing so that's what's been happening with us for a long time which is we've been even though the media has suppressed us for a few years now We've been we've been kind of going out there. So, sorry, what was the third part? Do you think what would I want? What to have? I'd want that to happen. I don't. You know, when people say, "Oh, you know, don't you want to go to Antarctica?" It's like Antarctica's protected. No one's going out there. They'd see one. They'd see us coming a mile, a thousand miles away. We they they the internet is completely monitored at this point. Don't don't anyone that's in denial about this. I have no I, I can't believe you haven't thought of this by now, which is look, the backbone of the internet, the entire internet. We're not talking, talking about specific things like social media. The internet is a military backbone system, which is, you know, it's how the the, the military it was built in case the military had ran into big big problems, right? If there was conventional damage, they would have a way of communicating right? And then they realize it's like, hey, we got a pretty good system going here. It's like, you know, maybe this electronic bulletin board system will start catching on. And so they started introducing the concepts of the public and the public built their systems on top of it. So if you think that the military who runs the backbone of the system is not going to take a peek every once in a while, and that I mean all the time, <laughs> of course they are. So so to your thing, it's like, you know, they, they monitor all sorts of emails. And if we were like just going to promote an Antarctic expedition, they would see us coming from so far away and they would be so ready for us in different aspects. So they'd probably just get us lost or have something break down. And even if we were in Antarctica, what are we, what are you expecting to see? I've talked producers out of going to Antarctica because it's like, look, if you know anything about photography, it's like, that is not a place you want to shoot film. It's just white on white. It's like, there's no definition. It's like, you don't want to go there. I go, plus it's, you know, the Americans, um, the American Navy was searching out there for 30 years and didn't find anything. And, well, until 30 years later. 
It's like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, we don't, we don't, I, for me, you don't have to do an Antarctica trip because the social consciousness will update on its own. You get enough people talking about it behind the scenes, enough people talking and talking. I mean, I've read definitely, it. So definitely, 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 definitely. They definitely. will, they will get it. Now, will they riot in the streets and burn down NASA? No. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, will Con- will- just- sorry. Well, I'm sorry. One more thing, which is, will Congress even stop funding NASA? You know, our our government gives them uh, pushing sixty million dollars a day, as far as the budget goes. That's a lot of money, sixty million dollars mm-hmm. a day. And you know, what do we get out of it? You know, it, we haven't even you know, the government bought and paid for. They're going to keep moving forward, but I'm I'm not too worried. Anyway, go ahead. I was just going to ask then. You know. These people, somebody must have built this dome that we're in. Yeah. Would, would, would you agree with that? So are we, are we go, we're looking back millions of years, do you feel? Do you think we'll ever know? Oh, and no, no. Are the government in contact with them? I'm pretty sure Elon Musk built it. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, no, I'm telling you. Enough. I hate Elon Musk. I hate everything about him. He's a, he's a complete and utter fraud. Uh, and I wish he would get... He, I wish a rocket would just tip over on him. It, it, it just, just end end my suffering. Um, do I think this was built millions of years ago? Uh, do, uh, okay. This place is old, but it's not that old. Meaning the carbon... Da- I never believed in the carbon dating system. I have... Uh, la- last time I, I probably talked to you guys about the fish, you know, the hole in the Loch Ness. I probably brought that up at one point. Yeah. Which is look, carbon dating is is absolutely wrong. If anyone wants to question that, look up the coelacanth fish, C O E L A C O C A N T H. Uh, coelacanth fish, ugly fish with a whole bunch of extra fins on it, which was supposedly extinct for seventy million years, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. The British government found some off of Africa, and then more outside of Africa, and then now National Geographic is swimming with them, and it's like um. So how are you wrong about that? Because you said it was been gone for 70 million years. So 70 million years is a meaningless number. Um, do I think Do I think this place is p- possibly a million years old? Yeah, maybe. But the civilizations that live inside it don't go that long. So our unbroken history only goes back 5,000 years, give or take, right? Do we know? I mean, if you guys watched any sci-fi shows or, or heck, hell, a- ancient aliens for that matter. You know full well that we are not the first people to rent this apartment. Uh, look at the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the real pyramids, the Bosnian pyramids, Bimini Road, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu. There's remnants of civilizations. We have no idea what the hell happened, right? It's like, wow, look at these buildings. You know how old they are? No idea. <laughs> Do you know how they built it? No idea. It's like, it's a mystery. And then you just move on. You, you, you know, sci- if science can't answer something, they'll just they'll just put it in a filing cabinet and not talk about it again. And wait till ancient aliens tries to talk yeah. about it. <laughs> so, um, but do whoever built this place, um, I mean, is that what you're asking? You know, are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and it's the government. Do you feel the government? You know, you, you see ufos people see ufos right right right, right. contact with friends from other worlds and stuff like that all right do i think okay when it comes to the building of this place who built it right it can only be one of two tracks which is one an advanced civilization which is older and more powerful than ourselves right this the the sci-fi line or the divine and really at that stage you're kind of splitting hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity Come on, if a golden spaceship showed up, you would have two groups of people. You'd have the nerds that'd be criticizing them constantly. It's like, oh, wow, they do look like Avatar. You owe me $10. Or the other people would be like, we must build a church to the blue people. Start building it right now. <laughs> and, and you know, and it just gets goes gets worse from there. We start sacrificing things to the blue people. And it'd be, it'd be awful. So for me, do I, are, do I believe there's things flying around the sky? Oh, God, yes. Um, and I knew that way before Flat Earth. There was a British guy. I can't remember the documentary I was watching. At the very end, he said, he goes, you want to see some weird stuff? I'm not going to do a British accent. He goes, uh, he goes, he goes, get night vision binoculars and start looking up. And I go, oh, that sounds like a wager. So I did. I, I, I tested different night vision binoculars and I was looking up in the sky. This guy is crawling with stuff crawling you just can't see them because everyone because of sci-fi has 
burned in their heads that UFOs only work when they have their lights on. And it's like, you realize the cars work just fine without the headlights. Absolutely fine. All day long. You don't have to have your headlights on. So, in fact, the only reason we even mention that now it, it's been reinforced is because now we have auto headlights to just turn on. Right Beforehand, you had to turn them on. You know, not that long ago. So, where's it going with this? So, do you know are are there things flying around there yes are they us no no the united states would love to take credit for that and they try from time to time it's like oh yeah we're not reverse engineering wink wink it's like dude you are not up there the, we've been people have been reporting things flying up in the sky for centuries long before the united states was even a glimmer in england's eye right long before so but do i think they are aliens for example no no, I used to, not anymore. Uh, beforehand, people would be like, oh, they're from Mars and Venus and Saturn, you know, all the shows that goes in the, or another dimension. It's like, no, no, I, they're just older versions of us. That's all they are. I mean, we, imagine, imagine a, a civilization when they're done. Well, I believe, I, just, I firmly believe this, that once a civilization is done, you know, they run their course here on the surface they are told like like a senior graduating class it's like yeah you don't have to go home but you gotta get the hell out of here and they're told to to, to vacate and with the instructions afterwards you know and again they have unified field technology we don't with the general population if we did we'd have flying cars like the jetsons we don't but they have unified field technology which means they they can have they don't even need submarines and trains and planes they only have one thing then you can do basically it's a swiss army knife yeah. of vehicles yeah, yeah. So if that's the case, they're also told at some point, do not interfere, kind of like the prime directive, do not interfere with the people who's ever on the surface. You want to pick off some people in a boat somewhere, campers that are lost in the forest or drunk guys that are fishing. That's fine. That's fine. You can do that, right? Do not land in a town and start getting out there and, and taking selfies and signing autographs. Do not, do not even remotely do that because you will screw up everything and there'll be repercussions. And they don't. But every once in a while, I mean, which is why the big UFO sightings, the big ones, again, I, I think I mentioned, maybe I mentioned this last time, look up, if you get a chance, Google the, the 1561 Nuremberg event. It's the greatest UFO sighting of all time over the city of Nuremberg on a beautiful, clear spring day where two giant armadas of ships just started hammering on each other. And I don't know who the cops were that showed up a giant black angler craft and, and, uh, and, you know, broke it up and then, and then took off. You could not do that today because they'd be recording. But even then they drew it because they were over the, over the city for an hour. And Nuremberg was one of the big cities in Europe at the time. So anyway, what, I, what I'm getting is that we're it's a, it's a lot more enclosed and a much much more intimate system than you might think. Meaning the 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 graduating senior classes of this place are hanging around, but they're only observing. They're not allowed to interact. Now, who knows? Maybe that might be lifted eventually. Maybe at the end, you'll know when when the end actually gets close to our civilization because the sky will start filling up with stuff. Then the government will, will try to explain it away if they can. So that's my so, so 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 Mark, what do you think is beyond the dome? Then, in is there space? Is there is it another dimension? Is it another vibe? I'm just trying to you know if anybody's uh, yeah. listening, so trying you ever, to understand what's beyond it. You ever watch uh, the Chronicles of Narnia? Yes, it's like that. It's like that. A lot of a lot of snow and wizards. And, no, it's not. It is uh, for me. It is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, in fact, I, I mentioned. I think, I, do you know? Do you know what's funny about that, Mark? I think what? you had him for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was on the edge of my seat. I, that's that's <laughs> a. I'm I'm stealing that bit from when when people call in into my podcast from Canada, Canada. I'll, I'll say that they're coming calling in from like Ontario, and I'll go Ontario. As you know, lies between Narnia and Mordor. <laughs> And, and people would be like, what? How does that work exactly? It's like, that's not true. Either way, though, it's in Middle Earth. Okay, so outside of this world, you have to think about what's inside of this world first. So if this world, don't, don't discount, if you want to say it's heaven or Shambhala or Nirvana or whatever you want, that's fine. And it kind of is, but it's more finite 
So, you know, again, I'm not going to pick on the, the the Bible crowd with this one where every Bible ends with, and they lived happily ever after, you know, it's like ever after. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, <laughs> for, forever is a concept that eh, only goes, only goes so far. Little play on words there. So this world is 99.9% .9 conflict. If you haven't noticed, I never got married or had kids. So I have a lot of time to stare at things. It is 99.9% .9 conflict. It doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how talented, how rich you are. You always have something to complain about here. And I find that fascinating. Even if you were a monk in the Himalayas, chanting, hovering three feet above the ground, you're still going to have to deal with mortality, right? There is, it is almost inescapable. Your moments of contentment and peace here are very brief. And I think that's very deliberate. It's not an accident, right? Because, you know, the question people, it's like, they ask, you would ask God, which is, why do you let bad things happen to good people? It's like, what's well, just how it works? Because if you didn't, people would figure that out and no one would do anything bad. You know, it's the Ned Flanders line. It's like, if, if, if the good people always had good things happen to them, why the hell would you risk that? You, you wouldn't, you, you know, if all, you, well, that's why everything, there's a, a certain randomness to it. So if this world is 99.9% .9 conflict, then outside of this has to be the opposite. I'm a big, big believer in dualism, which is, you know, it can't be light without shadow, hot without cold, pain without pleasure, that sort of thing. You can't appreciate one thing until you experience the other. That doesn't mean you have to be put on the rack to, to understand pleasure, but it does mean you have to, you don't have to understand suffering to a, to a certain point. So I use, here's, here's my heaven, heaven analogy which is, let's say you are on the other side of this world, right? It's an unlimited universe, 99.9% .9 unlimited. In fact, I call it the near perfect because it's almost perfect. The problem is, is that it runs off and it's fueled off of novelty, meaning what we have problems with here, which is, you know, it's what's new, what's going on? We always say that, what's new, what's happening, right? We hate being stale, which is why when people run out of things to watch on Netflix, they start losing their minds, right? It's like, and that's just a TV show. That isn't, you know, outside of the media realm. So let's say you're outside of here and you're living in the near perfect, right? And, and you're going through everything, every possible scenario, paradise scenario you can think of. Not the stupid line on the beach with margaritas, you know, for 500 years. That's boring, right? You're, you're an athlete. You're a rock star. You're, you know, a fireman. You're, you're whatever you want to be. And you do this for, you, know, you date everyone you wanted to date. You had revenge on everyone you had one revenge on. You do all these different things. And the, and the reason this is happening is because of, well, I just call it the genie machine right? It's a genie that, that gives you unlimited wishes, right? And, and I mean, you could ask for three wishes and you'd be like, well, one of the wishes could be unlimited wishes. Fine. You want to go to that path? That's fine. So a genie machine just keeps asking. It's like, all right, what's next? What's next? What's next? And eventually, because the universe runs off of novelty, eventually you start running out of ideas. We've all done it. I mean, this is why television shows end, right? The writers just can't come up with anything. The term jumping the shark, taken from a 70s show, which I remember vividly, where where um, a show about the 50s, Happy Days, where literally they did the, the, the an episode where Fonzie jumps a shark with water skis during an episode. And it was so off. And people are going, what the hell? And it became a meme afterwards. Like, you know, when you know the show is run out of ideas. So all of a sudden, you're running out of ideas, right? And you, you're, you're just like, okay, I'll, I'll do a couple things again. I'm going to be a rock star for a different band. And, you know, you do that again. And you keep coming back. And the genie is like, okay, you had ideas yet? And it's like, yeah, dude, I am totally tapped. What do I do? I'm going to go nuts, right? Just, well, I got, a, I got an idea for you. You're not going to like it, but it's going to work. And it's like, okay, what is it? It's like, well, I'm going to send you to a place. You're going to hate it. Oh, a million different ways you can die. Uh, even more than that, of places of suffering, limited lifespan, 70, 80 years. And it's like, well, what's so great about that? It's like, well, because once you get out of there, you're going to come back here and it's going to be like, it's absolutely brand new. It's going to be fan freaking tastic. It's like, wow, wow, that sounds really, really great. What's the catch? The catch is, you're not even remember we had this conversation and he snaps his fingers Thanos style. And here you are. <laughs> So anyone that, compl anyone that complains, no, 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 go with me on this. Anyone that complains is like, look, you volunteered for this. 
This isn't something that you were that you were forced or shoved into. You were given every chance. The Masons talk about this in their tracing boards. They know some of this stuff. Look up the first five Mason, the, well, the only five tracing boards of the Masonic. It is literally the diagram. It is the quick start guide. It is how you get in. It's what happens when you get in. It's when you die and what happens when you get out. It is fascinating to look at. And I, I stared at this thing years ago. And it went along exactly with what we do in, in certain simulations. And that is that is what it is for me. It is, it is a cyclical process. You can't appreciate one thing without another, which is why, you know, trust fund kids are completely ruined. Do you have trust, you know, you have trust fund kids over there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Kid, kid, yeah, kids yeah, are, yeah, yeah, born into money that don't need anything. They usually end up freaking basket cases because they have no perspective. Right, it's the journey. It's I know it sounds cliche, but it is the, it's the hero's journey or any journey for that matter. There's you know high, there's hills and valleys, and uh, on top of that, I think I think you get to pick some of those things ahead of time, but your but the memory of it is blocked. So meaning you don't get the the, the what's the metaphor? Um, uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I never really liked that. It sounds like a dead metaphor. You can't have your cake, eat it too, and still have your cake. <laughs> whatever it, what, what i'm getting at is you can't remember if you remember what you were before you came here this place loses all relevance so you volunteer and and they they're very very specific about this it's like look you know full well that because what would happen is if you could remember your life when you came here i'm not talking about just general reincarnation it kind of feels like that but it's it's a little different which is if you if you remembered even a fraction of it and you came here, if something went wrong, you just bail. <laughs> You'd leave. You'd be like, I, yes, I can you go, would. Yes, you I, would. I yeah, go back yeah. to the near perfect. Where's the nearest bridge? <laughs> In fact, I'm going to take some people with me, you know, while, while I'm doing it. So that's that's what I think is outside of this place. And and I've, wow. I've thought for a long wow. time. There you go. Meaning of life. Yeah, I just want to just change the subject uh, just a little bit, Mark. Yeah. Now, for, for the future, what's new? What's happening new with you at the moment? Are you are you involved with any new research? Are you traveling anywhere? You making new connections? What's happening with you? Well, after I solved the meaning of life, I decided to get into time travel <laughs> and possibly world domination. No, uh, it, no, no, no. For for me. It's it's kind of like the, it's really kind of the status quo because of what's been happening for the last two three years well three years plus now uh, because we were stunted so much in in the um, uh, the groups we could go to you know we couldn't we couldn't do conferences because we couldn't do venues that that would um, allow us to go in without masks I went to my first conference in a couple of years last year out on the east coast in the United States and that was that was really fun that was done by um, Karen B Channel uh, which she she was she was awesome. Um, as far as the new research, eh, everybody's, I mean, every once in a while, what, what, what happens is you get these new waves of people that'll come in it's like, oh yeah, we're going to do long distance photography and they'll run down the beach and do more long distance photography or they'll do laser tests. The lately though, it's been kind of, everything's been, you know, what's the whole macro micro thing. You guys do anything on TikTok? You, you know what TikTok is, of course, right? Yeah. yeah, that whole TikTok thing. That's really what's been happening lately, which is it's not been experiments. It's been a whole group of younger people that have been getting into Flat Earth through TikTok. So what they'll do is they'll watch. That's so weird. They'll watch Flat Earth videos on YouTube and they'll react to them on TikTok and post them. And then we'll grab those and put them into a compilation and put them back on YouTube. And it just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. And it's really tough. It's 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 great in some ways because we're recruiting new people with these teasers because TikTok's really, really short, right? You can't, the TikTok videos are very, very short. So, I mean, how much can you explain about Flat Earth in two minutes that's con going to convince anybody? Nobody. But you can trigger people in two minutes. You can, you can throw a whole bunch of facts out there that's unsupported by nothing because there's no time to support it. And then people will just start losing their minds. And it's like, I'm going to react to these TikTok videos. So right now it's been sort of a churning of social media, not so much physical experiments. We've, we, I mean, come on, we've done so many of them. Uh, but and and anything that we had in the works was stunted because we only we we could do very very limited conferences. We couldn't do anything international as far as conferences go. 
So uh, it's, that that part's been kind of tough for me. You know, just do do what I do, and uh, and talk to as many people as I can, and say yes to everybody if I can, except for trolls. In the UK. Well, what? Especially, Especially UK. UK. Oh yeah, yeah. If it's UK, I absolutely will talk to you guys. I don't care who it is. It's interesting you say. I've spotted that on um, TikTok as well, where people are doing lives, and they're mostly younger people. Yeah. And on the live, they'll say, um, "The prove to me that the Earth is a sphere." No, I right. said sphere at the time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll be doing that, and then they'll have people be able to call in or come on the live with them. Right. And and propose their theories. So it's interesting you touched on that. Uh, yeah, the, the TikTok is a is an amazing vehicle. Uh, interesting, by the way, that it's Chinese backed, but it, it is it is really it has helped us in that we again the, those short things. And yeah, I I mean I I kind of cringe sometimes because the yeah you, know, you watch a twenty something, you know, screw it up, right? You know, it's like they're giving out not necessarily bad info, but there is some 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 mistakes in there. But it doesn't really matter because at least it's getting out there. You know, they, 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 their enthusiasm is outpacing their, uh, their fact checking, which is, which is again, helpless in, in the end. It's like, all right, great. Fantastic. We, uh, I, we've gotten to the stage now to where nobody says in back in 2015 to be like flat earth. What's that? Never heard of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Other than what you learned in, in school, but now it's like a flat earth people like, Oh yeah, those guys. <laughs> And those guys, employ, you know, is a broad, broad range. So, yeah. That's Do you fun. believe the, um, I know we talked about uh, the documentary that you took part in Behind the Curve last time. Yeah. Now, um, I, I felt when I watched it, it had more of a sort of positive effect in terms of Flat Earth on me, the, the majority of it. I'd say the yeah. first half. That yeah. I enjoyed more. Now, do you feel on the whole it's it had more of a positive effect or or otherwise on? on oh yeah, no, definitely. The, the 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 flat Earth community again hated it, absolutely hated it. I knew they would, yeah. but I have seen too many flat Earth people with it. In fact, there's one being built right now, another documentary. Not not, but but it's being built from inside our circles, and I was just like, look the. The problem was once you get into flat earth, you don't like dissension. So a flat earther would never make a video where they would have a scientist. Then Neil deGrasse Tyson's never going to be caught on a flat earth video. You know, it's like, what do you think of flat earth, Neil? We're, you're never going to see that from our team. You're going to see that from outsider community. So it really helped us because the audience, most of the, the majority of the audience that watched it were not flat earthers. Uh, I mean, the studio audiences I sat in with the most of that crowd was, or those crowds were, uh, were, were non flat earthers. So it helped people because it raised the questions. It introduced a topic formally into social media, officially put the stamp in social media to where now me other media and journalists could talk about it because they didn't even have to call us up anymore. That's the part where people, they, they sell us short, which is okay. Now we don't have to even call Mark up to talk about, ask about flat earth. All we have to do is watch the, the, the Netflix commentary or documentary and then, and then comment on it. So no, our numbers jumped through the freaking roof when that thing came out because it was, it was too easy. Plus Netflix promoted us for months. I mean, we, we ran the full three years on it. And at the end we ended really well because during the pandemic, people were running out of stuff to watch. Hey, let's, you know, go through the documentary section. So no, 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 it was absolutely a pos a positive effect. If anything, it it helped galvanize the community because most of the community again was against it. Everyone's like, oh, it's a hit piece. It's a hit piece. My only regret is that it did not generate more trolls because our biggest weakness in our community is we do not have high caliber trolls. We just don't. I don't we we've got we have flash in the pans. We have a few dedicated trolls like Simon Dan from your side of the pond. Um, Professor Dave from this side of the pond. There's a new new British guy actually. He's out. I can't remember his channel name. And you can tell when they get in into it. A photographer. Uh, I should probably look him up really fast. The um, hang on, I'll find him. A photographer who wasn't doing much, 
And then all of a sudden he starts doing, he did a video on, it was doing like the moon landings. And then he gets into fisheye lenses. You can see exactly what happens where he was doing research on fisheye lenses and he must have seen a whole bunch of flat earth content came up. It's like, I'm going to do a flat earth video. Gets a couple hundred thousand hits. What do you think he's going to do from that point forward? You know, it's like he was, yeah. he was averaging like 2000 hits a, a video. Now he's doing triple digits. Of course, he's going to, he's going to talk about us. So, but that's our, that's our big weakness now is we don't have a major celebrity. Neil, Neil doesn't dedicate against this. Bill Nye, Brian Cox doesn't, uh, Joe Rogan doesn't, he toys with it every once in a while. Uh, just if we, if we had one of those, then the community would find a common enemy right now. And I'll use reference from your side. It's, and that's straight out of the movie. I wasn't kidding when I, and that hasn't changed, which you mentioned in the movie, which is we're like the Scottish Highlands. You know, where, oh, yeah, we'll hack each other all day long, right? Because we have nothing better to do. But at the very end, we all hate the English, right? That's mm. that's what we we would like that in the troll world. And that, that comparison there was at the very at the end, we all don't believe in the globe. We may disagree on a lot of different smaller concepts. But we don't believe in the globe. What we don't have right now is a is a dedicated troll that everybody can rally against. If we had that, oh, we'd be unstoppable. And we just obliterate somebody, but nobody's come out. So I was like, all right, fine. And we've been begging them, begging them to, hoping, you know, that someone would lose their minds. But because there are so few, very few media scientists, Brian Cox won't do it because it's beneath him. You know, that whole British thing. He's like, how dare you? He's like, he, does, he doesn't even want to look at us. Michio Kaku just makes him angry. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's, he's too busy. He makes way too much money doing public speaking engagements. So plus he doesn't debate anybody. He um he's been re he's re he's a stage performer. That's that's all he does. He's he's like a white he's like a, um, a jack in the box. That's all you know, you know, dun, 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 dun. he pops out space is amazing. That's that's all he does. But he's very good at it. And honestly, with his stage presence, he could sell anything. It was just blind luck that he did. Uh, are, are there are there lots of um scientists that are stepping into this realm on on the positive side are, are there people or not no there there are a few sides or, or, or you, you could argue that they've, they've been conditioned oh yeah no well it's not it's, way. it's not just conditioned it's the academics behind it so we have practical people that'll that'll be on our side pilots and engineers and architects and air traffic controllers i've got a whole list of, of subject matter experts military They'll, they'll talk about it all day long. People that fire weapons. It was like, oh, yeah, we never take into account the curvature or the spin of the earth or any of that crap. It doesn't exist for us. And it's like, why is that? And it's like, I don't know, maybe because it doesn't exist. Um, but when it comes to academics, how the system is set up, once you pass your master's and you're going for your PhD, and I know people, you know, they're, they're PhDs, that the, the peer pressure is so huge, no, one's go, no one wants to break ranks. So, I mean, when you get up to that level, you've spent so much money and time on your education. The only thing you care about is being published, you know, in pa papers yeah, and, yeah. Pe and peer review. The scariest word for any academic, especially when you get up to past your master's, is ostracized. Um, in fact, I, you forgive me, because over the, in your side, over here, it's the bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD. I don't know what it's called over there. I think it's um, very similar over here as well. Probably, because we stole it from you guys. So... But what the, no one wants to be kicked out of their peer group because once that's yeah. once you're ostracized, you're done. You're absolutely done. So which is why most scientists won't even go into the ring with us, because let's here's a great example. Let's say you're a scientist and you, you want to do a debate with me or David or Jaron or whoever. If it treat it like a boxing match, if you don't knock us out in the first five minutes, they're not looking at me anymore. They're looking at the scientist and they're going, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Why hasn't he knocked him out? Why is Flat Earth still in the ring? And the longer that goes on. So even if it's a push, right, even even if they win just because, you know, by a technicality, their, their science is still under the microscope. So no one wants to be that guy because you, because you know full well, you know, they talk to their friends and their friends, I'm sure they have talked them out. Of, it's like, don't you dare do a debate with Flat Earther. That would be academic suicide. So... It, it's been it's been tough sledding in that regard. It's it's false heroism in a way because for for hundreds of years we 
we've been told to look at doctors we've told to look at archaeologists i mean there was this big uh, thing that um graham hancock did and god forbid if you question the the doc the dogma of yep. society this scientific viewpoint and and yep. actually we we have a right to question we have a right to question and so really to the surface of things yeah. do scientists really know what they're talking about probably not <laughs> a lot in a lot know. of a lot of cases no um tesla said it said it best you know the rogue scientist that probably cheated he probably shouldn't have been here to be quite honest <laughs> i mean the stuff he invented was way way beyond i mean come on he had a he had a ring that supposedly could cause earthquakes it's like dude i don't know what the hell you were building um but he said that um the problem with science is that no one ever questions the foundation so you know it's always all oh, we were standing on the shoulders of giants it's yeah but you never question the foundation that the giants were standing on so it goes when you get you know four or five levels high you know when 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 theories are being attached to theories which are being attached to theories he goes it's meaningless because everyone assumes the guy that they're building on is absolutely right nobody tears down the guy below them they always build on top because they want to be higher than the, the first guy no one starts at the base so yeah, no, sci science is, we'll use a quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson. He goes, he goes, science is true, whether or not you believe in it, which is extremely mm -hmm. arrogant. My quote is, is science is true eh, until the day that it's not, you know, they, they put their stamp on it and then all of a sudden they're completely wrong. They never apologize. And then they just say, well, this is the new science. This is the new term. This is the new wiki page. It's like, that, which is what they do with that stupid fish. You know, the fish is like, they were absolutely wrong. It's like fish has not been dead for 70 million years. It's alive right now. It's like, well, it's a, it's a living fossil. It's it's in an evolutionary state of stasis. Yeah, that sounds good. And that's science, what that's, sorry, go ahead. science science can't prove any can't prove everything. No. We, we pro, pro, we've proven that. It's 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 a fact. Science they, can't prove anything. Every, every, everything. They have changed into what we like to call scientism which is, you know, they, they've really kind of created their own religion, which is you either believe in science or you don't. And if you mm -hmm. do, then you don't, sorry, you don't, then you, uh, then you, you know, then you're on the outside looking in and you're probably a religious heretic. Uh, if you're, if you're in with us, don't you dare break, break ranks. So yeah, science has absolute it, it, huge flaws. Yeah, absolutely. And and me and Chris, we, we've been doing a lot of research on, you know, the history of humanity. And we've been speaking to a lot of people. And it's the same in archaeology. You know, you look at Egyptology, they have a particular narrative that they want to tell us that this is the way human society has been. And actually, there's a lot of people questioning that. But if you question that, you yeah. get thrown out of um, the institution that you're involved in and you get yeah. scrubbed out so you yeah. have to think a certain way and for me it just pushes people people are the, these institutions that you know it pushes people in their awakening more people are questioning more because yeah. of idiots sorry to put it bluntly idiots in power that are very very arrogant that they, they, they want us to think this particular way, but too many people are waking up now, Mark. Yeah. Too many people are questioning. Yeah. There's a and wave of thing, which is amazing. If if anything, I would think part of the pa the pandemic uh, backfired on them in that there were so many people that were left at home with not a lot to do. And again, there's only so much Netflix you can watch before it's like, oh, you know, your friends start saying you stuff on YouTube. I mean, YouTube had a huge uptick. People are going down rabbit holes that normally didn't have rabbit holes. And the, the difference was is that they, they weren't out in the streets. You know, they weren't talking about it, you know, out in the pubs with their friends. They were at home just sending messages. You know, people were, were firing videos to each other constantly. So the rabbit holes were going were going down. And yeah, you're right. Lots and lots of people have been waking up lately. And that, that part has been fun. No question. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm more, mostly focusing on, you know, the, the Great Reset and, and to see where it's been uh, been taken right now, it seems to be on hold because of the, the military conflict <laughs> fizzled out. And all we're dealing with right now is, uh, you know, sudden and unexpected things. 
So, so, so you, you, you're talking about COVID there, a uh, very controversial subject to a yeah. lot of people. We don't want to get into that, unfortunately, or fortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's your thoughts on, on, was that part of the agenda, the COVID side? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely was. Um, I mean, it was, it was a two-part thing. Again, if I was, you know, I get accused of a lot of things. If I was wearing the black hat and sitting at the Illuminati table, the plan was solid. The plan was, would have worked. Uh, and it would have been pretty seamless, which is you introduce something like, you know, the, you put in the fear, give them the solution, which is the shot. And then you distract everybody for an extended period of time with an event. And the event was supposed to be, I mean, come on, England was right in the middle of it, was supposed to be a big um, European conflict with, with Russia. You know, it was, it was supposed to escalate Finland and Sweden. Yes. I mean, they, they've got a russia's got a big thing for you guys i don't know what the sas was doing but russia is like oh we if anything starts england that's who we're going after first which is yeah whatever i mean i don't know if you guys saw those graphics i was just howling when when they're saying okay we're gonna launch special nuclear torpedo from the i think the the west side of your island it was gonna create this radioactive tidal wave it was gonna wash over the whole country it's like oh my god anyway um but but it never happened. Russia never went, never took the bait. They um they they saw it coming. Like nope, nope. We're just gonna do our thing. And then over on this side, um, we had a thing that was supposed to be going with Taiwan. You know, Taiwan was in China, yeah. and we we're trying to yeah. get that going. Nope, China didn't do that either. So now, and you know, then the Georgia Guidestones get blown up, and so now we're just kind of do we're sitting back i mean it's like okay so side effects that's that's what we're gonna do this year is is side effects for the whole year and and inflation i don't know what inflation's like over there but over here it's not yeah. good no it's not good in england it's terrible yeah it's absolutely what what it's, it's covid covid numbers quite high death wise the media is very very uh, obviously, the controlled, and there's we're very limited what we're allowed to see. But there's a lot of stuff coming out from our government now. Things that have been secret. A lot is there a lot of deaths in America? What what's the yeah yeah yeah? Like? There's there's a well there's a lot of more way more injuries than deaths. I mean a lot of I mean I've got family members with the ones that did survive. Uh, you know, big a lot of injuries across the board. Um, you probably saw what happened recently, where the um, you know we had that American football player that went down. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, that was a big, big deal. And the reason why it was a big deal, I want to drag this out, was that uh, when he went down, it's not like the NFL players were were in a, were in an, in a vacuum. They they weren't. Everyone knew they were. All, you know, sports guys watch a lot of rabbit hole stuff because they have a lot of downtime and they're traveling and they're in hotels and crap. And so everyone was waiting for this to happen in that league. And all of a sudden it does on live television. They're like, oh, okay. I mean, you gotta remember that's the first time in our history that a game has been canceled because of something like that. You know, and people go down in the field all the time. Oh, his knees, his ankle, his arm, his shoulder, his head came off or whatever. But in this case, it's like, oh no, no, no. I mean, he was, he was dead on the field. They had to revive him and now he's alive. We'll see if he ever plays again. I doubt it. Um, but but all the other players were so freaked out about it that they that it was the players that decided on the field like yeah we're not going back out there screw that it's like lightning striking yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna roll those dice so it's it's been escalating over here the thing the problem with our media I think it's a little different from yours is you know the news over here has always been if it bleeds it leads so they can't help themselves. They have to report on it. So as much as we'd like to downplay it, if it's a celebrity of any stature, they will report on it. And uh, and well, sorry, one more thing I got to throw in, which I love, is that there are a lot of people, and you know full well this is what we would do, who got placebos, who got sailing solutions. You don't want, you, you want a, a small time comedian to go down? Yeah, yeah, sure, fine, fine. You're not, George Clooney's not going down. Right, uh, Denzel Washington's not going down. Brad Pitt's not going down. In fact, we haven't had a a lister die from anything in like two or three years. Mm -hmm. So, so when you see somebody like uh, Justin Bieber develop face paralysis, right, right, and, that would, uh, Katy Perry as well. The what? Katy Perry. As yeah, well. Katy Perry. Oh hell, yeah, we'll, we'll, let's do Celine Dion. 
and and yeah. you can't catch them all, right? You're never. Some people are going to fall through the cracks, and so and but when they do, you give them as you know, you have a special team go out and you talk to their doctors, like give them this, and let's hope for the best. And you know, Celine's not going to be touring anymore; she's done, right? And you remember they built an entire hotel around her in Vegas. You know, this was she was a, she was a franchise. So we're just kind of, I mean, that the problem was right now is we're kind of, we're waking up even more over here because we're focusing on that because it shows up on the news because there's nothing else to watch. There was no war. Nobody's talking about Ukraine anymore. We don't even care over here. It's like the average American still, still to this day doesn't know where Ukraine is. It is like, hey, where do you think Ukraine is? You know, the man on the street. It's like, hint, it's next to Russia and by the Black Sea. You should be able to figure it out. And they're like, what? what? Well, why, 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 why are we, why are we all talking about ha Harry and Meghan? Is oh, another oh way God. to distract us. Is another yeah. way to distract. Yeah. What's really happening? What's absolutely, really happening absolutely. In the agenda. There's, there's only so far those will, will carry though. I mean, the Harry and Meghan thing. Yeah, the soap opera crowd likes it, and yeah, there's a, a lot of, there's some people over here that follow it, but it's not big enough. It's, it's, it'll, I mean, come on. How long can you run that? A week? Two? It's like, oh, another hairy, hairy bombshell. It's like, eh, kind of, maybe. We'll see. I mean, I, I, you guys probably pay more attention. Well, you definitely paid more attention to it than we well, do. Well, 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 we, we do because I, I, and I'm probably Chris Fiona, and amongst a lot of other people that uh, the monarchy needs modernizing and needs changing. We need an evolution, a more democratic. And I don't know how yeah. that will, uh, tr will trigger, or maybe it's part of it. And that's why you can't get down the rabbit hole too much because you, you will screw your head up. Right. So you have to take it in small doses. You have to see it in small doses. Ab absolutely. But anyway, it it we're fo we're we're focusing on on everything we can over here. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for the the next big thing. If if XBB is the next big thing, all right, we'll see how that goes. If it was me, all right, I'll, I'll throw one more prediction out there for you. If it was me and I was running a think tank that you know oversaw some of this stuff. Uh, if you guys are listening, um, I would try. I would try to introduce a. Um, I would. You know what a two part epoxy is? Does that ring a bell with you? They're no. glues. When when you're gluing something, there's glues that uh, come in two two vials, and because they they it's like a super glue, but they don't they don't become a super glue until you you mix them up. So when you mix up that you you take the two vials, you mix them up really fast, and then you use it really really fast. Until that point, you can store them for as long as you want. But when you when you put the two together they harden really quickly um you could do that with something like what they're talking about now so anybody that's gotten the shot you could introduce something into the population which acts which which only reacts to people that got the shot you know what i mean because oh, come on they gave out 12 billion doses worldwide and yeah. you know divide that by how many people and how many people got boosters and and all the other crap and you could you could turn that into something maybe but you have to have a distraction my my biggest complaint has been it's like look you need an event if you do not have an event to distract people from this I, come on how many times are we going to hear the whole sudden and unexpected thing <laughs> before i'll start, i'll send you a link uh, i'll put it in as soon as we're done here i'll put a link into it somebody put up on my on my channel where um i don't know who made it but it's brilliant where it's a college for the, for the, um, what do they call it? The um, uh, Institute for coincidences. And it is, it is brilliant where it's like, you know, you know full well what they're talking about, you know, but you know, the, the, the way they're being vague, they're trying to skip, skip past the censors, but you know, full well, it's like, yeah, how many times can you see that, you know, in the news? Is you can't because we all, our language is limited. You can't use sudden and unexpected more than so many times in a week before people are like, "Hey, you know, you can't say unexpected that many times in a week and still say it's unexpected." At that point, it becomes common. So, yeah, anyway. Cause that's something that's happened in the media over here, particularly uh, with Russia. It's like he's going to push that button. He's going to push that button, and and like you say, the number of times it's said, it, it just loses its validity, doesn't it? You just uh, it, you become numb to it. No oh yeah, I, again, that was me. It's like it'd be. I I did an episode, um, God, a couple months ago, you know, called um, Cry Wolf, which is like, look, guys, it's like it's like first you said that Putin was dying. Right, he's dying. He was insane. He was dying and insane. Uh, he he was going to be overthrown by 
I don't know, 20 different people. There's going to be all these coups and, and it's like, Oh yeah, he's going to push the button. He's coming after he's going to, he's going to invade to where I made an episode just recently here. I'll paste this in for you. The, um, there it is. The, watch that when you get a chance. Uh, it's up, up on my channel. The, um, thank you where I, they did a Jack Ryan season three of Jack Ryan, which just came out. Right. And the whole, the whole series, you know, Tom Clancy, I'd forgotten had died, uh, like, like 10 years ago and they, they but they don't act like he's dead right they just keep putting his name on the top of things and he but he died in his 60s he, he should be alive but he died in his 60s 10 years ago but the whole the whole season is about how russia is going to be overthrown is there's going to be a false flag attack in russia but it's going to be done by russians so it's the generals are going to stage a false flag attack in russia by the americans Right, so they steal a Patriot missile, detonated in Russia, but the Americans had nothing to do with it. So basically, the, the the CIA are the good guys, and they're coming in to rescue the world from itself. Right, it's like they're going to stop Russia from doing the wrong. It's all Russia, and during this entire series, Russia is at war with Ukraine. In in the series, I'm going and and the, instead of Sweden, you know, there's a there's a the lead thing she's from the czech republic the president of the czech republic she's a dead ringer for the head of the prime minister of sweden and it's like the whole thing it's like i'm going okay you guys see the irony here it the the show is about the cia but it's written by the cia it, it's like but some of the most most blatant i, I don't know if propaganda is the word it, 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 which of course leads me into my my final thought on that which is the mo the only plot hole in jack ryan you know, the whole Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan thing is that Jack Ryan would be a CIA agent because the whole premise was he was this boy scout working in the CIA. It's like, no, no, we've got to do the right thing. It's like, what? You're in the CIA. You never do the right thing. You're always doing the, the bad, dark stuff. I mean, the whole concept of black site came from you guys. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the fact that he would even make deputy director, it's like, uh huh. Yeah. What? What's your thoughts on your and your current president at the moment, Joe Biden? I I will give the handlers credit <laughs> because no no he he should never have been president. It, it it two two parts to that. One is I was really surprised that uh, we know because I watched the election process and he was not in it. He was out of it during the election process. But as they were analyzing the front runners, they realized that they were the worst options politically meaning their value it's like no nah, they're going to make too much of a mess they're going to they're going to start changing things they're going to start talking we need someone that's absolutely going to play ball with us if anything we need someone in, in you know incoherent senior citizen that is going to you know on his last legs you know th that we can you know he's we're lucky that he's walking right and so when he came out the prediction was he's never going to make it to 24 you know for you know to he's never going to finish his term it's never going to happen. In fact, right now he's supposedly involved in a scandal. We'll see if that even pans out to anything. In fact, um, the, my friends were saying, it's like, no, there's no way. He's not going to even make it the summer of um, 2022. 20, uh, and he made it. I don't know what they're using on him, what they're pumping him up with, how they're, you know, it's obvious they can only use him for limited engagements. Uh, but no, he's my, Do my own. Do you think Trump will get in? Do you think Trump will get in again? Oh, I mean for the re-election? Well, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think so because they've got younger people coming in that they can pass off. The Trump is already being kind of put on the back burner right now. There's a the the governor of uh, Florida, DeSantis, looks like he's going to be the guy. And uh, if I was going to choose a VP, I would choose um, Gabby Gifford uh, from um, Hawaii. I think I think she'd be great. She's she's fantastic on camera, but again, my my complaint with the demo the problem was is that blue team the problem isn't red team. Forget about the whole Trump thing. Red team they got people they can put forward for twenty four. Not that I care because I've never voted in my life. Because it's, you know in the end, come on, these guys are all puppets. But what gets me is that blue team can't even come up with a puppet for twenty four. You know, they don't want to do Biden. It's like are you kidding? It's like you'll just keel over during the inauguration even if he does get it. Um, blue team on our side is, you know, most of the acting, the, the groups, most of the actors over here, the heavy hitters are blue team, 
and come on, Trump was in reality television. So why didn't you out Trump him by by choosing an actual heavy hitter actor? Hey, we've had actors yeah. going to politics. Why didn't you, in fact? Why didn't you pick most of the people that played presidents? They're still alive. You can pick Bill Pullman. I mean, Morgan Freeman's probably a little too old. Harrison Ford played the president. There's all sorts <laughs> of people you you get to play president, and they could have stepped in that. Hell, there was even talk about George Clooney at one point and Oprah. I mean, Oprah ticks off all sorts of boxes. So why didn't you pick Oprah? She could have. And and I don't know if they turned it down. I don't know if they, you know, whatever, whatever their, their argument is. But m the looking forward, if it's not Biden going forward, who is it? I, we there's there's no second choice right now on on blue team. You remember that in the first time it was Elizabeth Warren who they hated, and uh, uh, Sanders <sighs> that, that wasn't going to go anywhere. So blue team blue team's in real trouble. They're they're trying to tear down Trump right now, but I think deep in their minds are like, do we have anyone that's stepping forward to to? I mean that's that. I'm sorry, that's bad writing. I'm a big believer in plots, and you know it's like you got come on, you got to come up with somebody. Mm. There you go. Hey, our our politics over here is a freaking mess, utter utter freaking mess. Yeah, but 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 I here one more point. Which ours is, ours I, isn't much better. Ours isn't much better. <laughs> yeah, I I do think that that Biden was chosen in the end to help facilitate the military conflict that never happened. Meaning we have never looked weaker than we are now. We have, America has never looked more inept. Seriously, if you wanted to beg a country to, to you know, because nobody's, you know, hit the U.S. on on our soil since, well, you guys. So if you want to hit us, you know, Russia or China or whoever, this would be the perfect time if you're going to do it. And if you can't, if you're not willing to do it when Biden's in there, I don't know what more, more you can give you. And we could put a, come on, we could put a crash test dummy in, in there and, and be, do more than Biden would. Yeah, we, uh, we seem to go... In this country, our pattern has been we're just running through prime ministers. I know. No I, don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know who you have in there right now. <laughs> it's Rishi Sudak at the moment. He's oh. not. He's, he's not. He's not my prime minister. He ain't my <laughs> prime minister. <laughs> but the, the previous, the previous one, uh, Liz Truss lasted a matter of weeks. She was. Yeah. I think she broke records. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They should all be. They should all be in prison. Ah. She she had barely chance to change the wallpaper in number ten because she was, <laughs> you know <laughs> nice. Well, it, anyway, what what are we what track. what are we going to wrap this up with? Because I I got to run. Yeah, what I wanted to do is uh, because I know you mentioned. Have you got a model of the planetarium there with you? Oh, I got the model. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see that just to close up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is. Wow. A model of Flat Earth for everybody, yep. what we've been talking about. Yep, and there it is. We also have our previous uh, podcast, if you want to listen, where Mark goes into uh, details with that. Yep. There you go. There's seven billion little things that live in there right now. <laughs> no, seriously, it's I, I have to. It's been, it's been great. It's been absolutely great again, Mark. We'll have to do this yeah. again in a few months. Yeah, we'll yeah, to happy, happy to. You guys, let me let me know. And uh, again, UK, all for you. Mm. I, 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 just, I, uh, I, I seriously, I fell in love with that place when during my couple trips that I was over there uh, before the pandemic. It was, uh, I, I was, I was regretful that I did not go earlier. So. <laughs> oh, fantastic! The uh, and and what I love about this subject, uh, the the flat Earth theory, here is uh, that it, it questions the nature of our reality. Yeah, which I feel at this moment in time is an extremely healthy thing to be doing, and I feel more and more people are doing it. So yeah. this the the idea of us doing this chat that it reaches to those people to say, you know, you're not on your own, you're not crazy. What what you're seeing, uh, what Mark's seeing, what he's picking out is, you know, these things are real. They are happening, and more people are coming out with them. So, I just want to thank you, Mark, for giving yeah. your time to us. It's uh, always great. You got a great energy. It's like having a cup of coffee after talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you feel like going to sleep after. Oh no, no, I know. get I get pretty jacked up. The worst time is when I when I try to do an interview just before bed. Uh, I have oh. if I if I do it before bed, I got to go two hours just so I can sort of wear myself out. But uh, no, no, thank you guys, I, I appreciate it. Thank you, and, thank uh, you. If you ever need me, let me know. 
Thanks so much, Mark. Look forward to doing another. Guys, please be kind in the comments. We've done our best, myself and Stephen. Just an open chat. Try not to uh, take things too personally, the way of your opinion. You decide. You decide. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. Until we speak again, I want to say goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching the Collective Awakening podcast. For more information on the Purple Mountain Spiritual and Wellbeing Centre, you can visit our website at thepurplemountain.co.uk and don't forget to click and subscribe.